Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about Lucille Ball and the contribution that she had to both Star Trek, the series and the movies, and of course Star Wars. And I do want to start with Star Trek because I think there is a more direct connection there. And I think you will all enjoy both fans of Lucille Ball and of course of the sci-fi series. Now we need to give a little background before I get there and that is with Lucille Ball. Of course Lucille Ball is known as the queen of comedy. Most likely you will know her as being the star of I Love Lucy, arguably one of the greatest comedy sitcoms of all time. She was zany, she was funny, she was one of the most hilarious things on TV in the 1950s. Essentially, with her husband at the time, Desi Arnaz, they created this empire. As a result of the popularity of the show, they made millions and millions of dollars. With this, they decided to buy not one, but many studios and created Desi Lu Productions, which was the productions that created lots of shows, especially one that I'm going to talk about today, and that is Star Trek. Now it is well known that of course Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball were having trouble behind the scenes in their personal life, in their marriage, for many different reasons which I won't go into with this video, but I will tell you that they finally divorced and Lucille Ball decided to buy out Arnaz and ran the company herself for several years. This would make her the first head of any motion picture studio in all of history. Now what's interesting that around the same time hoping to give back to younger actors what she had learned working in Hollywood, Lucy ran an actor's workshop under the Desilu banner. The most famous alumni that worked under her were Carol Cook, Ken Berry, let's also not forget the Hollywood columnist and Turner Classic Movies host Robert Osborne. But the individual that makes most sense to this video is of course Majel Barrett. She of course starred in the original Star Trek and was the wife of Gene Roddenberry who was the creator of Star Trek and of course the whole Star Trek universe. Incidentally Majel was also used in all of the subsequent Star Trek series, six of them, up until her death as the voice of the computer of the Starship Enterprise. Well shall we do a little time computation? With rice, with vegetables, bowling in style, Arch. working. I also want to mention Mark Daniels. Mark Daniels was one of the directors of the show I Love Lucy. He's well directed a lot of episodes of Star Trek the original series. Now if you're a big Star Trek fan you have to know the name Walter M. Jeffries. He was a Desilu set designer. Jeffries worked on The Lucy Show from 1962 to 68 when Gene Roddenberry approached him in the mid-1960s about designing a spaceship that would anchor a new series called Star Trek. Of course, that ran from 1966 to 69. Now this design that Jeffries created was of course the iconic look of the Starship Enterprise. This is a classic and reworked and tinkered design that has never been abandoned for over 50 years. Now if you've seen the Star Trek series, you have heard of the Jeffries tube aboard the Enterprise and that's incidentally named after him. So he of course has a huge contribution and really cool connection to Lucio Ball and the Lucy show. And with all these wonderful connections to of course I Love Lucy, Lucille Ball and Star Trek, I think you may think that they're interesting, but what is the solid connection? Why is Lucille Ball responsible for the Star Trek series and of course the Star Trek universe that we know about? Well, of course, as I previously stated, Lucio Ball was the head of the studio and she had a lot of power in deciding what shows would be accepted, what shows would be shot and go to pilot, canceled, and so forth. So when discovering how expensive the pilot to the Star Trek original series was, Lucio Ball, of course, being the head of the studio, overruled the board of directors to make sure the episode was produced. She felt that there was something unique about the show that would really touch the viewers. However, the board of directors was really hesitant because they believed that this series about something in space would never catch on. There was nothing ever done like this before. However, even after NBC rejected the initial pilot in 1964 of Star Trek, they ordered another one and they introduced William Shatner as Captain Kirk. And then this is where Lucille Ball agreed to help finance, as stated, against her board of directors for the show. 
Now this science fiction series limped along for around three seasons, 66 to 69 before it was cancelled. But when the 79 episodes were sold into syndication in the 70s, the plots became the greatest beneficiary of Desilu's invention of the rerun with the show I Love Lucy. It was one of their most popular hits. Lucille Ball as well was the sole individual who okayed the series Mission Impossible which led to the movies of course with Tom Cruise as well as The Untouchables. Of course now you can see how Lucille Ball's decision was one of the smartest she ever made of course in television and movie history and of course a lot of the people who were very talented who worked with her were instrumental in making the Star Trek universe popular and of course something that we all know and love. This is one of the major reasons why they're still producing TV shows and all this content of the Star Trek universe. Now of course, what is the connection to Star Wars? How did Lucille Ball have a connection with Star Wars and the eventual creation of it? Well, this is more indirectly, but if you ask George Lucas himself, the creator of Star Wars, he said a very interesting thing in his interview. He said, and I quote, Star Trek softened up the entertainment arena so that Star Wars could come along and stand on its shoulders, end quote. And the idea of standing on the shoulders, of course, is Lucas giving his nod and humility in saying that, of course, Star Trek came before and Star Trek is a giant, which, which Star Wars rested on top of. In the interview, he continued that there was very big hesitancy for the studio in making a Star Wars film. However, there was already a fan base there, and that fan base for a sci-fi type genre of film was already in the Star Trek fans. And so he says that a lot of the Star Wars fans came out of the Star Trek fans and were one and the same people. So this basically means without Lucille Ball okaying Star Trek, there would be no Star Wars. And so of course, I thank you so much guys and gals for watching this video. I do appreciate your support as always. Don't forget to always stay positive, always better yourself, and most importantly, be hopeful.